5 is on surface area and volume of a sphere. So this is the very last section in geometry. Uh, so a sphere is all points in the space that in space that are equal distant from a given point called the center. So every single point that's the same distance um, forms this sphere shape that goes around. Um, the radius of a sphere is the segment, uh, a segment from the center to a point in the sphere. So it's exactly what you think it is. So this would be a radius. This would also be a radius. Uh, and a chord of a sphere is any segment that joins two points along the outside of the sphere. So the surface area of a sphere is the first formula that we're going to learn. So the surface area of a sphere is um, S is equal to, and it's very, very similar to our area of a circle, which is pi r squared, but it's actually going to be 4 pi r squared. So it says find the surface area of a sphere with a radius of 100 meters. So if our radius is 100, our surface area then is 4 pi times 100 squared. So 100 squared is going to be... 10,000, so times 4, so we're going to get 40,000 pi. All right, the next part, oh, and our units are meters squared because it's an area. It says a leather ball has a radius of 5 inches. Estimate the amount of leather. So amount of leather, again, is surface area. So it's going to be 4 pi times 5 squared. And 5 squared is 25 times 4 is 100. So we get 100 pi and it's in inches squared. So you could find these all as um, decimal approximations too, but I typically leave the pi in because it's more exact. All right, so the great circle. So if we have our sphere drawn in, the great circle is, if it's basically if I took like a string and put it around the biggest circumference, <laughs> um, it's the right around the center of the sphere. So this is called the great circle. So the intersection of a sphere and the plane that contains the center of the sphere. So the volume of a sphere is um, the volume V is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, and those two equations that we learned today, the surface area and volume, are related using calculus, but we don't know that yet, so I can't show you their relationship, but it's kind of a cool um, correlation between those. So number one, so find the volume of a sphere that has a diameter of 50 inches. So we're saying we have a sphere, and going across the center, we have 50 inches. So if our diameter is 50, then our radius then is going to be 25. So our volume is going to be 4 thirds pi times 25 cubed. So if you put in 25 cubed into your calculator, you get 15,000. 625, and sadly we can't divide that by 3, so I would just multiply by 4 and then write it as over 3. So we're going to have 62,500 over 3 pi. So if Math Excel doesn't like that type of answer and it says to round to the nearest tenth, then you can always approximate, and you'd have 65,449 point, so if it's set to the tenth, it'd be 0.8. I typically do three decimal places because that's pretty common for AP calculus classes later. So we should get used to it. So to the nearest thousand. All right, so number two says if a basketball is 78 centimeters in circumference around its great circle, so that means we have a sphere and going around here has a circumference of 78. So we know that two times pi times r has to equal 78. So our radius is 78 over 2 pi, which reduces down. So if you take 78 and you divide by 2, you get 39. So it's going to be 39 over pi. So that's the radius. You could find a decimal approximation, or you can just keep it like that. So if we're trying to find the surface area and the volume. Our surface area is 4 pi r squared. So it's going to be 4 times pi times 39 over pi squared. So what will happen is you'll have 39 over pi twice, and one of those pi's will reduce out with the pi that's up on top. So you could do that. So you'd have 39 times 39 times 4. So it'd be 6,084 over pi. Or if you wanted to find the decimal approximation, you could say 1936.597. And again, the units would be centimeters squared because it's an area.
And likewise with the volume, we have 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we take our 4 thirds pi, and we take that 39 over pi, and we cube it. So what will happen is one of those pi's on the bottom will cancel with one of the pi's on the top. So we'll basically have like a pi squared on the bottom because we'll have two pi's left on the bottom. And you can go ahead and extend that out and write it out. So we're going to have that 39 cubed times 4, and then we're going to have divided by 3. So we're going to get 79,092 over pi squared, which if you find the decimal approximation for that one, it ends up being 8,013.695 um, centimeters cubed. So you can do that as well. All right, and I believe this is a couple more. So it says a sphere is made from a steel cylinder. So we took a cylinder and we melted it down and we transformed it into a sphere. All the steel is used when compressing the cylinder into a sphere. What is the radius of the sphere? So we're trying to find this. If the cylinder had a radius of 2 and a height of 16. So first we need to find the volume of the cylinder because we're going to compress it down and we're going to create this sphere out of it. So our volume of our cylinder is the area of the base times the height, which is pi r squared h. So we're going to get pi times 2 squared times 16, which gives us 64 pi, so 4 times 16. And so we want to have that same 64 pi as our volume of the next one. So the volume of the sphere we said was 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we're going to have 4 thirds pi r cubed is equal to 64 pi. So when we divide by pi, these two pi's end up canceling out. They go away. So we have 64 is equal to 4 thirds r cubed. So let's get rid of the 4 thirds. So the easiest way to get rid of 4 thirds is to multiply both sides by 3 fourths. So that cancels the 4 thirds and 3 fourths because it's 12 over 12, which becomes 1. So we end up getting 3 fourths of 64, which is 48, equals r cubed. So r is the cube root of 48. So you may not know how to put that into your calculator, so let me show you how to put it into your calculator. Get my calculator up. Uh-oh, it didn't work. Uh-oh, I might have deleted my calculator app. But basically, on your calculator, um, you're going to have something that says math over on the side. So you can hit the math button. And mine is option number four. So it looks like this. <coughs> so we put in the cube root of 48. But the easiest way to put in a cube root, and something that's going to come in handy later on when you're in um, math classes, is to put it in as 48. 48 to the 1 3rd power. Okay, and you'll know what that means when you take Algebra 2 next year. Um, but basically, that will do the cube root for you. So if you do 48 and then raise to parentheses 1 3rd power, you end up getting the cube root of 48, which is 3.634. So maybe try it both ways on your calculator and see if you get the same thing. And that was the question we asked for. We said, what is the radius of the sphere? So it's in centimeters. So 3.634 centimeters. All right, so number four. So it says you melt a four-inch diameter sphere of wax and pour it into cylindrical two-inch diameter candle mold. So we have a sphere that was four inches in diameter, and we're going to pour it into a cylindrical candle mold. So we're making one of these cylindrical candles. So how tall can you make the candle? So again, we need to find the volume, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. We have 4 thirds pi times 2 cubed. So we have 8 times 4 is 32. So 32 pi over 3. And we're going to change it so that we have this cylinder. So the cylinder has a volume of pi r squared h. So area of the base times the height, right? So the area of the space in this case was pi r squared. So we want that to make 32 thirds pi. So our radius is. Well, we don't know our radius. Oh, no, we do know it. We want it to be 2-inch diameter. 
So if we have two inches in diameter, we have one for our radius. So one squared times h. And again, our pi's will go away because we divide by pi, divide by pi. So we get 32 over 3 equals 1 squared h, which is just 1 h. So our answer is 32 over 3. So if you wanted to find that as a decimal, it'd be 10.6 repeating. So 10 and 2 thirds inches. All right, so that's the end of 12.5, so quick and painless.